Cooperation and Punishment in Public Goods Experiment. Scene 1, Take 2. What is a public good experiment? Formally speaking, it's a standard of experimental economics and is often used to investigate social preferences. Now, let's make it simple. Just imagine that you're assigned a group work. You only know how much you have contributed to the task, but know nothing about others' contributions. All team members get the same score, which is the average of the total payoffs calculated by multiplying the total contributions with a factor greater than 1 but less than the number of the group members. An ideal situation would be that everyone in a team cooperate actively and make good contributions. However, what happens if there is a free rider who makes little contribution or is not helpful at all? Do you think it's still fair to give everyone the identical grade? I believe that most people would say no, because evidence show that people have a strong aversion against being the sucker in social dilemma situations. As a consequence, the cooperators may want to punish the free riders. This paper aimed to show experimentally that there is indeed a widespread willingness of the cooperators to punish the free riders, even if this is costly for them and even if they cannot expect future benefits from doing so. There were four treatment conditions in this study. There is a stranger treatment with and without punishment opportunities and a partner treatment with and without such opportunities. The probability of the partners being rematched with the same people in the next period was 100%. Here, I will only discuss session 3, in which participants were strangers and first play the treatment without punishment opportunities and then the one with such opportunities. Each condition lasted for 10 periods. 24 participants were randomly assigned to groups of four. Each person started with 20 points to decide how much they would like to donate to the public pool. The table here shows the feasible punishment levels and the associated cost for the punisher. Participants only know their own punishment activities and the aggregate punishments imposed on them by the other group members. Results show that Without punishment opportunities, the mean contribution in the final years in Session 3 was 2, while the number increased to 13.1 with punishment opportunities. Although the study is subject to the limitation of a laboratory setting, it has many important implications. First, it suggested that in both stranger and partner treatments, the existence of punishment opportunities largely increased the average contribution level. In the partner treatment, the average contributions even converged to full cooperation in the presence of such opportunities. Second, when there is no punishment opportunities, the average contributions converge close to full free riding for both treatments. Also, the more one's contribution falls below the average contribution of other group members, the more heavily he or she is punished. Hence, this study indicated that there is a widespread willingness of the cooperators to punish the free riders. Ignoring this fact can lead to wrong predictions and this wrong normative advice. This finding has a profound influence on policymaking in institutional and social structures. So, getting back to our group work example, here we can infer that a group evaluation counted as part of the individual's grades would be helpful in increasing the cooperation level. This is the end of today's presentation. Thank you for watching.